Hi, I'm Noel Powell from creationeffects.com and in this video I'll show you how I made this shiny rainbow title in After Effects using a completely free preset called Afterglow. With Afterglow you can get a much brighter, much nicer looking glow than you can get with a normal glow effect that's built into After Effects. You can make glows that are super bright at the center and then fade it out with a faint, gradual fall off. And you can adjust the ratio for that fall off using the controls. The controls work just like the controls for the old glow effect, so they'll already be familiar to you. And like I mentioned, it's a free preset, so I'll leave a link in the description where you can download it. And then after you install it, you can access it anytime inside of After Effects and just start using it in place of the old glow from now on. So first, how to install it, just put the .ffx file in your presets folder. I'll put that location up on the screen of where it goes on your computer. It's uh, different for Mac and Windows. And inside the presets folder, if you haven't already, I recommend you make a new folder and name it Creation Effects. And you can put all your free presets in there that you download from the site, and it'll make them easier to find in After Effects. All right, I'm in After Effects now, and I have some examples up. Uh, we've got the same red circle and text on both sides. And on the right, I added the Afterglow preset. And then on the left side, I added the standard glow effect, and I played with the controls to get it as close as I could to this. So let me point out some differences. Uh, first of all, there's the fall off. Uh, here we've got a really bright glow at the edge, and then it, it dims really quickly at first, but then the fall off is more and more gradual with a faint glow reaching all the way out here. With the old glow, we basically just have a straight linear gradient from red to black. And they have this A and B midpoint control, which seems like it would help with that, but uh, it doesn't do what you'd expect. Now let's look at the text. Uh, this is all one layer with both some thin text and some thick text. And you can see the glow doesn't even affect the thin text. And then down here, because of how thick the text is here, we've got clumping where the, the glow is extra bright. And there's always going to be that imbalance on the old glow. But on our afterglow, it's much more consistent. You can see uh, it affects the thin and thick text equally, and there's no clumping. So those are a couple of the differences. Uh, you'll also find that afterglow is much better at getting really bright glows. Uh, it's better at getting really big glows. And it's going to give much more consistent results when your layer has multiple colors. So let's make this shiny rainbow title and we'll see how it works. Uh, this can be done all on one text layer uh, with one application of the preset. And I should note that I'm working in 16-bit. It'll work fine in 8-bit, but the results won't be as nice. And it'll work fine in 32-bit as well, uh, but the glow effect is super bright in 32-bit. So you'll just have to turn down all these controls. All right, I've got my text here and I'll add the Afterglow preset. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to just type in glow in the effects and presets panel. And you can see it's in the creation effects folder in my presets folder. And if you don't see it, uh, you may have to click these three lines up here and choose refresh list. And with my layer selected, I can double click this to add it. And then uh, if you have any self-respect, you'll clean up your space and just close all of these effects because you don't want to have to look at that mess. And I'll just open up the afterglow controls here at the top. I have the controls organized into four folders and each one has its own description. Uh, if you open this so you can read about how it works. And before we create our rainbow colors, I want to give you a quick crash course on how this works. This first group of controls has some options for how you want to composite your glow. And then you have your threshold, radius, intensity. Um, all of these controls are the same that they are in the normal glow effect. And I'm not going to explain it all because if you found this video, you're, you're probably already familiar with how the glow effect works and you're unsatisfied and you're looking for different options. Uh, but if you need to, I'm sure you can find lots of tutorials on YouTube on how the glow effect works. So what you should know, though, is that these first four slider controls determine the values for the first glow effect, glow one, down here. And then all the following glow effects amplify those values. And you can control how much the values are amplified in this next group of controls, the glow falloff controls. 
For example, if our first glow has a radius of 10 and our radius factor control is set to 300%, that'd be a factor of three. So our glow two will have a radius that's three times more than glow one, which would be 30. And then glow three will be three times bigger than glow two, which would be 90. Or you can make the values decrease with each glow effect if you wanted. So if you wanted the, the threshold to get less and less, you could set the threshold factor to 95 or something like that. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I think in most cases you can just leave these at the default settings and uh, just edit the glow one values up here to get the glow the way that you want it. However, I do recommend that you play with these large glow controls. The large glow is the last glow effect, glow five. This one's actually four times the radius of the glow before it, so it's huge. And it'll give you that nice faint glow around the whole layer, which I think is an important element that's missing from the standard glow effect. And just a tip, if you're playing with these and you can't seem to get the large glow bright enough, uh, set this to use color control, and then pick a color here, and if you need to, uh, turn down the threshold and that'll give you a much brighter large glow. Okay, next we have some controls for the drop shadow. Uh, the drop shadow is applied before the glow effects and it can help make the glow even more intense right at the edge of the layer if you just increase the, uh, the opacity control here. And last we have the glow streak controls. Uh, the glow streak is made with these first three effects. And if you already have a, a big glow on here, you only need to increase this opacity slightly to see it, like 1 or 2%. And you can rotate the streaks uh, with the angle control. Okay, let's make our rainbow title. Uh, I've got my text, and before we add the glow, I want to add our rainbow colors. I'm just going to hide all the glow effects for now. I'll start by adding a fractal noise texture. And I'll scale it up to 1,000 or so and I'll increase the contrast to 300 and decrease the brightness a bit, negative uh, 35. And I'll lower the complexity to three to make it smoother. And to make this texture move, I'll animate the evolution. Uh, instead of keyframes, I'll just alt click and add a quick expression and type time times 40. So the value will increase by 40 every second. All right, close that. And now we'll add the, a colorama effect. And we can just leave it at the default settings. Um, that'll map that black and white gradient to all the colors of the rainbow. And there are too many bright spots on here right now. And I want to limit the really intense glows to just a few small areas. So I'm going to composite another fractal noise effect over this one to darken it. And we can just duplicate this one, and I'll drag it below the colorama. And I'll just make a few changes. Um, I'll set the scale to 200. Contrast can be 400, and brightness negative 50. And on this one, I'll set the blending mode of the noise to multiply, which will darken everything. And, uh, but I don't want it to completely cover the text with black. So I'll lower the opacity of this noise to 50%. All right, so now we can turn on all of our glow effects. So I could expand or contract the areas that are glowing with the threshold if I want, uh, but I think I'll leave that and, and just make this brighter. So I'll increase the intensity to 1 and maybe increase the opacity to 80. And I'll increase the radius a little too. Um, in the fall off section, I won't mess with these factor controls, uh, but I do want to see more of the large glow. So I'll bring the large glow opacity up a bit. And uh, if the large glow isn't bright enough, you might be tempted to turn down the threshold, but just note that uh, the lower the threshold, the less vibrant the colors are. It kind of desaturates them. And you could always duplicate that large glow that might be a, a good look. All right, this is looking pretty good. Um, I'll just add a couple final touches. Uh, this drop shadow, I mentioned it creates a strong glow around the edges, uh, but it can only be one color, so it wouldn't help us much with this text. 
but I can use it to create a little stroke around the text. So I'll increase the opacity to about 80, and I'll decrease the width to about 4 pixels. And last, I'll add some subtle streaks to this, uh, just because I can. This opacity control is really sensitive, so we can do something like 1%. And that should do it. Pretty. I'm colorblind, so I like it when the colors are completely over the top, because I can actually see them. But anyway, that's Afterglow. I hope you find it really useful. And uh, there are a lot more free presets like this on the freebies page at creationeffects.com. And then the real fun stuff is the templates. So be sure to browse the site while you're there. I recently did one called Creation Trippy Effects, which has tons of custom trippy looks for your footage, as well as a bunch of trippy psychedelic animations that you can customize, all made in After Effects. Another recent one that's really popular is Landscaper, and that one lets you create any kind of landscape that you want, whether it's a jungle, or desert, or winter landscape, or tropical beach. It has all kinds of nature effects, and water, and you can create time lapses. It's really cool stuff. And uh, my last template is called Solaris. It lets you create custom 3D sun animations in After Effects that look totally realistic. Also, Shapeshift, um, I did a few months ago. It lets you do some really trippy transition effects with your footage. And I'll leave with a preview of the Critter Collection series of After Effects templates. Uh, this includes flocks, swarms, and schools. And these templates let you create custom 3D birds, insects, or fish, which you can add to your footage. And you've got complete control over the swarm and where they go. All of that and a whole lot more unique templates at creationeffects.com. Subscribe if you want to hear more about the new templates or free presets when they come out. And that's it. I got a glow. So I'll see you at the next tutorial.